when we did this, we came up with the top 10 elements of social media. Now, there are probably more. But, you know, if you say top 10, people actually remember them, right? So, um, <laughs> we came up with the top 10 elements of social movements. Um, and you'll see, I think, a little bit about how this addresses this issue of function and skill. So, we think vision and frame, uh, authentic base and key constituencies, commitment to the long haul, I'm going to go through these quickly, an underlying and viable economic model, a vision of government and governance, solid research, pragmatic policy, understanding scale, having a strategy, and being willing to network with other organizations. So let me go through this really quickly. The first vision and frame, and there's a great quote by a guy named Van Jones who says, Martin Luther King famously claimed, not I have an issue, but I have a dream, right? <laughs> so, you know, what we mostly do is I have an issue, right? <laughs> that is not a movement, right? A movement has a frame, it has a story to it, right? Uh, and whatever that story or narrative is, sets the terms for the debate. And then the policy package describes how the interests might be met, right? So the dreamer frame is the dream, right? The dreamer issue is what happens with those particular kids, right? And they do have a sense that they'll ripple out to change other kind of immigration policy in the future. But the frame is, I mean, you're not going to connect around, by the way, I'm illegally in this country and have been since I was five years old. Give me a break, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you connect around. If you send me back to that country that my parents came from, I don't, you know, I don't even know the language. In some cases, these kids don't know the language, right? I grew up here. I'm willing to contribute. I want to build a business. I want to be part of the American dream. I'm a dreamer, right? That's a frame. You know what I mean? So that's different than an issue. Um, the second thing that I think that we think is really critical, and this is something I'll come with a little advice I think at the end for you, for you all to pay attention to. You've got a lot of people approaching you who say they're part of the movement, but can't bring more than two people to a meeting, right? So movements actually need to have an authentic base in organizing, and you need to pay attention to people who have a base rather than people who don't have a base, but say they represent an interest, right? Um, movements, I have a commitment to the long haul. And this is also something which may be very relevant. Coalitions are episodic. They come together around a particular question. Movements are trying to build power to fundamentally transform things. So I think that what you'll see is that there's going, you know, one thing that hasn't been built in the United States is an immigrant rights movement. It's really trying to fundamentally transform the way we approach immigrants, the way we approach race, etc. Um, you know, uh, there's coalitions, um, I'll just give you a good example uh, that I used in this, but you know, there's, in the United States right now, there's a coalition, there's a very interesting coalition between people who are kind of left-wing and stuff like that and think we should have open relationships with Cuba, between them and farmers in the Midwest, who basically want to sell stuff to Cuba, right? Mm -hmm. That's not a long-lasting social movement, right? <laughs> uh, it's an episodic coalition. So another thing to think about is what's the difference between coalitions and movements? Because movements will actually be around for a while. Coalitions may be there because they meet short-term interests, but not because they share long-term values. And one of the biggest things going on in movement theory right now is looking at the difference between interest-based organizing and values-based organizing. Because interest-based organizing is thin, values-based organizing is thick, interest-based organizing can be short-term and easily fragmented by different interests, values-based organizing where people develop a frame around, say, dreaming. Wind up being, uh, so we think, uh, I'll just jump over this stuff, the underlying economic model is actually important. Mostly because movements are generally asking for redistribution. And now, it's a, even a neoconservative movement, which has uh, sort of said we need to have tax cuts for the wealthy Americans because if we do that, the economy will grow. They're asking for redistribution, right? So they have to have an underlying economic you know, model about why they think that works, right? So others do as well. Uh, theory of governance. We think movements need to have a scaffold of solid research, and that there's actually an interesting interplay between research institutions and movement builders. Um, we've actually been part of that kind of stuff. Pragmatic policy package, we think that, um, and this, you know, I think can be different in different settings, but in the United States in particular, it's a very pragmatic society. 
uh, if you think something's wrong, but you don't have a solution, nobody cares. Right? <laughs> they just, you know, so you can't fix it. So you may know there's a great thing in, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, I remember this great movie that was entirely in Spanish. It was a Cuban movie, but the one thing they were celebrating was, and they said in English was, Yankee know-how, right? Know-how, right? And Yankees, North Americans, right, are very pragmatic, right? So unless you have something that's actually a policy that will work, right? Uh, people don't move along. Uh, and then some of the stuff I said about scale, I'm going to jump over this. Uh, but I do want to talk about some last couple of things and then just open this up for comments. Um, so the other thing that's very important is whether or not movements network with other movements, right? So if movements themselves are very small and specific, that's different than being able to find strength and being able to be able to play well with others. And that also means that some of what we use as evaluation metrics for a movement organization is not simply how effective it is as an organization, but how well it plays with others. So let me give you an example that we use for ourselves uh, as what we think of as a movement research center. Uh, when work comes our way, our first question is, can someone else do it? And would we, by handing the work off, build up someone who's an ally in our ecosystem? Because that will actually wind up benefiting us in the long run. But beyond that, it's just something that we think is important. So that's a different measurement. It may actually keep our organization from growing as big as it could, but it winds up creating an ecosystem that's richer in which we survive. And actually, as part of an organization in Los Angeles that does a lot of work with social movements and immigrants and a number of other things, we're really only as strong as that ecosystem is because it winds up giving us the space on campus, for example. Um.